Hello, I'm Oson Henry 2, Foxrot Tango Golf, and today we are playing around with an LMB. Well, it was one in its previous life. It now has SMA output, power input via normal wires, so I brought out the YST for no reason apparently. And something I forgot to do, there is no TC blocking cap on its input when you replace the original horn of this type with an SMA, so I had to add, add a DC block. So the front end in this one it might also be dead. But, so, it is connected to a single generator at minimum output on 11 GHz. And yep, we cover all kinds of fun frequencies. And the IF goes into the roller swatch. Machine and we can see some spectra and we see a spike here So if we go to peak search Yep, we want have a peak on 1200 megahertz and if we change the frequency The peak moves whoop So what gives? Yeah, so what's interesting about this? Well, not much or sort of like LMBs are fun to play around with especially this cheap cheap ones, because you don't even feel bad about mutilating it like this. Like, at least with these ones you preserve the case, like this one I modified into a transmitter on that frequency, not an upcon, but a direct transmitter. These are still waiting to what happens to them. They're actually related to this project here, and this one is also related to that project. And this one I just I jumpered all the filters inside of it in an attempt to wideband it, but I might have to change the front end with, to some wideband MMYCs because I wanted to do like 14 gigs, not X-band, like 14 gigs. And yeah, X-band. So the thing with LMBs is that they have like this 9.75 gig standard LO. So yeah, not that exciting, but let's crank power a bit. Oh, they shorted out. So that's why there was no output power. Yeah, this is a bit drag. But anyway, uh, it's good fun. And so on, but we have this interesting 9 GHz local oscillator. So what gives? Yeah, well usually we use it on the high side. So this is the default one. For this higher one you need a 22 kilohertz tone, so we are not tone, so we are not using it here. So because this you get just like give it power and it goes it goes there. Okay. So in normal use we use low side injection, so the local oscillator is below the wanted frequency. And this is the standard intermediate frequency for LMBs, especially old ones, so it's a good rule of thumb to use. The modern ones can go up to like 2.1, 2.3 gigs. But on low side, yeah, we get the usual TV band from 10.7 to 11.5 gigs. Ooh, not interesting. But if we go below the local loss later, so if we subtract the IF from it, instead of adding it, we get an X-band. Hey, that's cool. X-band stuff is hard to get and so on, so why is nobody doing this? Well, because most of these LMBs, well, they have way... If they are fancier, they have a waveguide. Okay, cool. So what? Well, it's too small for X-Band, so you'd have to rebuild a new feed. Okay, then you have these, where we can just desolder the original feed. Like, yeah, you can see the probe, and you can just replace that with SMA, or solder in your own new waveguide or whatever. Or you do it like this, where I just solder an SMA to it. And I th really think the front end is dead, because I'm not getting that much power from it uh, on the IF. And uh, I'm st this is not not much, but considering that this would be receiving stuff from the satellite, this is quite a bit. So I think the first gas fed in this one is dead, because I had an attenuator here in my first tests years ago. And, uh, well, that shorted the negative bias from the gas fed's gate to the ground, and, and well... That kills the gasfet. So anyway, usually this is really annoying to do, and well, all of these have like DROs, like they are not PLL. There is just a free-running oscillator made using a DRO pearl, 
You can usually spot it from the one or two tuning screws. And why this one was selected here, because if this is so cheap, there's not even tuning screws. They just press them at the factory. And uh, that's it. It's really, really, really cheap. So there, this, I think this came with like Canal Digital dishes in the 90s, so the cheapest absolute possible ones. So nothing, nothing of value was lost. So, but because I don't have a waveguide here limiting my frequency response, we're gonna try how it does on the image frequency. Because, yes, the, the other response is called an image, and usually there's a filter. So, I should have actually opened something like this one up for you to see the filter in an old school one, but I didn't, so tough luck. But yeah, and also, this is way too thin, so even if you bored it out, you will. There's not even enough material for it to ever be bored out to become axe band. So you'd have to pull out the circuit board from it and figure out the tuning stuff. And because yes, you need the cavity for the tuning screws for the oscillator to oscillate, or you could of course replace it and supply your own 9 gigahertz or 7 gigahertz or whatever local oscillator. But then you are essentially Almost done the whole work of building an uh, LMB for a for X band yourself. But anyway, so we should get like 950 around here. So let's first go there. The lower edge. So we should have approximately 950. Let's jump to the peak. And we are approximately there, a few megahertz here and there, and this is what I mean by the DRO. It's not the most accurate one. And of course, this generator itself is not the most accurate one, it's free running. And if I want to know the exact frequency, I would have had to have a directional coupler in series and put a sample of that to my frequency counter and so on, but I didn't really bother because this is what we are interested in anyway. So, anyway. This is what we are seeing. We have, it's, mm, yeah, it's not having a good time, and we should really be averaging in this instead of just having it on here to see the peak it does. And the zoom on this is hammering for some weird reason. Yay, new phone. Uh, let's see. Let's put RBV to max and see if we still see it. Nope, let's rise the power a bit. Well, it's not happy with that. Too much noise from the IF. Yeah, it does not seem happy at all. But it's like on like minus 50. So let's go to the other side to 8.8 .8 gigs. Do we see anything? Well, of course not, because we are in the filter. So, how bad is it? Okay, we are seeing something now. There we go. And that I don't know, it might have been the phone. Ingressing these wires into the power supply and showing up there because that's the base station band. So we're getting the same minus 50. But instead of minus like 100, the power up, this is not calibrated to any degree, but it should be like comparable between it. So if I turn it up to 30 dB, it's a 30 dB difference. What is the exact output power? Who knows? But it, the difference is the one that matters. And we are pushing in more or less minus 60 dBm, as opposed to like minus 110. So we have to go, we had to go up with 50 dB of power 
which is a lot and it's, well, not the most perfect, but it's a respectable uh, opposite, well, not opposite side, but, but like image rejection. But in real life, in addition to that, you would also have the low pass filtering from the waveguide because it's too, well, it is just too small for X band. 8 gigs won't fit. So, this is why people have not done it, because the filters oppose us. So, this was also Henry 2, and this was a quick measurement on why this is not do usually done. And, well, why are these all here? Well, some of these are for demo, but these are here because I was thinking that if I could... Because especially with this one, the top comes off, so you could just put a flat PCB on it, and do your own feed or use SMA, and so on, and I have hopes that I can just jump for the X-Band filter and just have, then you could just have your own filter in front of it, with your own dedicated X-Band LNA. So, that's likely what's gonna happen to this, because it's not like I can convert all of them into transmitters, well I can, I have, and also done up converters and so on, but older ones like these, these things here, they are much more fun for conversions, because there's much more space, the parts are smaller. And these modern integrated things, these are much more boring, they are much more compact, much cheaper, and uh, they're not as fun to play around with. But anyway, we'll likely encounter, we'll hope, well, let's say, hopefully encounter this one in a future video, where we'll see if we can uh, get some more sensitivity, like say 10, 10, 40, or whatever, 10, 40 or 50 dB more sensitivity. And let's see, does it change when we go a bit below? Do we get more? Nah, it does not get more sensitive, sadly. Let's give it a bit more power so the spike is more visible. There we go. Yeah, and the noise loop is, I think, the usual passband of it. And possibly also some artifact from the analyzer. But it's what the noise loop from a usual, yeah, from an LMB looks like. And yeah, that's, that was cell phones. So, yeah. If we go below that, it starts to be at quite the low frequency. These Rodeswarts things always have their own logic. It's sometimes quite infuriating. Yeah, we are 9.5, so we're really close to the local oscillator. Going up. And now we are already overdriving it. We are getting like a milliwatt, almost a milliwatt out from it. And we are starting to see harmonics. Because we are on the right side of the local oscillator. And we are punching through the filter, so we actually have to... This down a bit. And yeah, we can see it drop down. And it's more about the intermediate frequency circuitry at that point because it is designed to do 12 gigs. But we are on like 2.3 gigahertz, which is a bit above 1.7, which is it is designed to do on this intermediate frequency. This refocusing from the phone is quite annoying. I don't think I'm gonna make the future videos with this again. But hey, this was Ocean Henry 2 in a quick gigahertz video. Mm. Playing with LMBs, because playing with LMBs is good, cheap, fun. Always grab cheap LMBs for like one or two euros. The older, the better. See ya!